So PEA or pulseless electrical activity. I, I have a couple of videos actually dedicated specifically to this on the channel. I wanted to create its own block here um, for the specific purpose of talking about PEA and expanding on it a little bit. So PEA is anytime you have electrical complexes present and you have no pulse on the monitor. So what does PEA mean? At, at its core, we like to say that it's electrical activity with no muscle contraction. In truth, sometimes that muscle contraction is so weak that we can't feel a pulse with it, which means that it might as well be non-perfusing because it's going to peter out if it hasn't already. PEA is not just a common function of cardiac arrest. PEA is often enough caused by other things, and these are the other things you should be checking for. What I'm talking about right now are, of course, the H's and T's. So the H's and T's are things that you can correct. Specifically in the case of pulseless electrical activity, some of those things that are sometimes correctable and can cause PEA are going to be hypovolemia, cardiac tamponade, tension pneumothorax, hypoxia, acidosis, a massive pulmonary embolism, or ventricular wall rupture. Now, no matter what causes it, your initial therapy is CPR and epinephrine. But do understand that sometimes PEA happens either because of a completely uncorrectable issue, such as ventricular rupture, right? Which often enough the patients experience sudden death and, and you don't get anything out of your resuscitative efforts. Or something that is completely fixable, as in the case of tension pneumothorax. So tension pneumothorax is a mechanical obstruction. The heart's sending its electricity, but it can't expand and contract because it's being smashed by this immense amount of lung that's in the pleural cavity, and we just need to decompress the patient. Whether or not you enact any of these therapies in the PEA patient is all based upon history and presentation. In a traumatic code, you're much more likely to decompress the tension pneumothorax if you have your, um, you know, unilateral breath sounds that are diminished and things like that. Cardiac tamponade is a whole separate monster. Um, pericardiocentesis doesn't happen outside of the ED unless a, a physician is present. Um, paramedics are not usually adept at doing this. There's not usually any training to do it. And there's not usually any standing statute that allows a paramedic to do this and still have a job the next day. Um, for things that are correctable, your hypoxemia and acidosis, you will have to either use the lab values available to you, or you'll need to use the history as best you can, whether it's to say if you have a renal failure patient who's missed two dialysis appointments in a row, you have a strong reason to suspect acidosis because you know their potassium is usually going to be high and things of that nature. But PEA kind of gets its own section because it is, it is one of those rhythms that is caused by several different things, some correctable, some that are just not outside of the, the hospital realm. Outcomes in, in PEA are generally poor. Now, just as a quick side note, you can see pulseless electrical activity in almost every cardiac arrest you run, a heart that's trying to beat and not able to. Because remember that pulseless electrical activity is any electrical impulse without an accompanying muscular contraction. So you may see it in your, I'm gonna call it the run of the mill cardiac arrest, although that is probably a poor choice of words, but you can see it in, you know, at, at a couple of different pulse checks and things during a cardiac arrest. It doesn't necessarily mean your patient has a tension pneumo, but for patients that are in persistent PEA, start checking for things like tension pneumothorax and stuff of that nature, because a lot of times there is a mechanical or a chemical obstruction to the heart's natural process. And if we can reverse that, then we need to. All right. Thanks for listening.